Hi, everyone, and welcome to License to Will. My name, if you haven't already guessed, is Will, and today I'm going to be taking you through my top 10 most anticipated games for the rest of 2020. Let's take a look. First up on the list is Grounded, a co-op survival adventure developed by Obsidian Entertainment. You play as one of four teens who has been shrunken down to the size of an ant in the backyard of a suburban home. You must try to survive the perils of the backyard by building bases for protection, as well as crafting tools, weapons, and armor to better fight, explore, and survive. There is a campaign through which you discover the reason behind your shrinking and work to restore the machine that can return you to your natural size. I'm excited to get my hands on this game primarily for the Honey I Shrunk the Kids nostalgia, but it also genuinely looks like it will be a fun survival experience. I think it will be fun to craft items from things you commonly find littered across someone's backyard. I'll be picking this one up on Steam when it launches on July 28th. Next up is Kingdoms of Amalur Re-Reckoning, a remaster of the title originally released in 2012 and developed by Big Huge Games and 38 Studios. The rights for the series were purchased by THQ Nordic in 2018, who announced plans to release a remaster. Set in the magical world of Amalur created by renowned fantasy novelist R.A. Salvatore, Reckoning follows the story of the Fateless One, a mortal without a fate in a world controlled by destiny. Returned from death by the experimental Well of Souls, you set out on a quest to uncover the truth of your death. I played this game shortly after launch and had a ton of fun with it. I poured hours of my time into the console version of the game and even ended up getting it later for PC. I'm excited to see the game return, hopefully better looking than ever and with improved combat. At the time of recording, there wasn't any available footage for the remaster, so I must apologize for the dated visuals of the original trailer that I'm using here. The remaster promises to include stunning visuals and refined gameplay, and will also launch with all of the original game's downloadable content. The game is currently available for pre-order on Amazon and includes both a standard and collector's edition. According to Amazon's store page, the title is set to release on August 18th. The next game on the list is New World, developed by Amazon Game Studios. New World is an open world MMO set in an alternate version of the 17th century that pits players against the haunted wilderness of Eternum, a mysterious island discovered during the twilight of the Age of Exploration. Originally presented with a heavy PvP focus, the title is shifted to be more of a well-rounded experience including both PvP and PvE elements. After the flop of their first release, Crucible, Amazon Studios has a lot riding on this title. I'm really hoping that it lives up to the hype around it, because there are a lot of boxes that this game checks off for me. I'm most excited for the action style combat rather than traditional tab targeting seen in similar games, as well as the PvP experience. Though the game was delayed from its originally planned release of May 2020, I believe the delay will only help, as this title seems to be more of an early access game at this point, and should really benefit from the extra time to polish a finer release version. Even with their first game failing, I think that Amazon has a lot of skin in the game. Amazon is a product-based company, and video games are products, so they should have a vested interest in their game succeeding. New World can be pre-ordered on Steam and is slated to be released on August 25th. Next up on the list is Swim Sanity. Developed by Decoy Games, an indie game company founded by brothers Khalil and Ahmed Abdullah, Swim Sanity is a multiplayer underwater shooter with action-packed co-op and versus game modes. Using a variety of unique power-ups and weapons, you can team up with friends to swim into adventure mode or clash in competitive, last-man-standing style matches. I always like to have a game that I can pick up and play with my partner or friends, something easy to jump into with minimal learning curve and low stakes. Swim Sanity looks like it will be right up my alley to fill all of those needs. I look forward to buying this title on release and swimming into some fast-paced tomfoolery. There's no current date set, but their website and Steam store page list summer 2020 for its release. Then we have Horizon Zero Dawn's PC release. This was the second title that I bought for PS4 and one that I fell in love with immediately. With its sprawling open world, beautiful art style, and exciting gameplay, this game captured my heart and a lot of my time. Even though it's unlikely they will change anything about the game, I'm extremely excited to see what the game will look like running on today's PC technology. There's currently no date set for Horizon Zero Dawn, but Steam lists the game is releasing summer 2020. I hope to pick this game up and play through it on PC before Horizon Forbidden West comes out in 2021. Up next on the list is Windbound. 
From developer Five Live Studios, Windbound tells us the story of a warrior that was separated from her tribe after being caught in a fierce storm at sea. Thrown from your boat and tossed onto the shores of the Forbidden Islands, you play as Kara and must craft tools and weapons to hunt and defend yourself while trying to find your way home. With an artistic style and atmosphere similar to Breath of the Wild and gameplay elements that remind me of all of the best parts of Raft, I'm very excited for this game. Windbound is currently available for pre-purchase on Steam and releases August 28th. The next game on the list is Baldur's Gate 3. The upcoming sequel to the wildly successful Baldur's Gate series is being developed by Larian Studios. Using a modified version of the 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons rule set, Larian's newest title returns you to the Forgotten Realms in a tale of fellowship and betrayal, sacrifice and survival, and the lure of absolute power. As a longtime fan of the Forgotten Realms universe and tabletop role-playing games, I was over the moon with excitement when the announcement trailer was released just over a year ago. Just about anyone with a small amount of knowledge of the Forgotten Realms lore knows that the monster featured in the trailer is one of the most exciting and terrifying creatures to encounter. They even recently announced plans for an early access on Steam and Stadia in August. The trailer includes the text, Early Access, August 2020, Maybe. So there's a chance that it may not happen at all, but with how far along the game is, I think it's a very real possibility that we'll be enjoying Baldur's Gate 3 by the end of the summer. Then we have Cyberpunk 2077. Developed by Witcher series studio CD Projekt Red, Cyberpunk 2077 has been building up a freight train of hype since its initial announcement eight years ago. At E3 2019, the third trailer for the game set it up for an April 16th release, which was later delayed twice. Cyberpunk 2077 is an open-world action-adventure story set in Night City, a megalopolis obsessed with power, glamour, and body modification. You play as V, a mercenary outlaw going after a one-of-a-kind implant that is the key to immortality. I am extremely excited for this game to come out. I have no issues with them having delayed it at all. I believe that delaying a game to ensure that it launches in as polished a state as possible is one of the hardest things for game developers to do in today's gaming industry, and I respect the decision by CDPR to do this. Now before you call me a shill, just know that I've always supported developers delaying games. I hate that modern titles are being sold without proper testing and release either in an unfinished early access format, with users essentially paying to test the product for these companies, or they're riddled with day one problems that take weeks and sometimes months or even years to iron out. But that is a rant for another video. I'm looking forward to playing another adaptation from a tabletop role-playing game in a setting that I'm very interested in. I've always enjoyed the interesting philosophical questions that are brought up when you start combining technology and biology. The game is currently set to release November 19th and can be pre-ordered on Steam, GOG, and the Epic Games Store. Next up on the list is Outriders. In development by People Can Fly, the team that brought us the Gears of War series, Outriders is a third-person shooter action RPG. You play as an Outrider, a human who was exposed to a massive energy storm known as the Anomaly while trying to colonize the alien planet Enoch. The game features both highly mobile action combat as well as cover-based scoot-and-shoot mechanics. Your character will increase in power as you collect stronger and stronger loot. There will be four playable classes at release, each with unique abilities and styles of play. Each class has a class tree that allows you to further customize your character to fit your preferred playstyle. I'm very excited to try a new looter shooter with deeper RPG elements than Destiny 2. I like the aesthetic of this game and I've been pretty impressed by all of the gameplay footage I've seen so far. Even though it's not going to be a game as a service, I'm actually kind of excited for that because it'd be nice to play through a story and not have to worry about paying for the next chapter. Outriders is available for pre-order on Steam and is currently listed for a release date of Holiday 2020. The last game on my list is Assassin's Creed Valhalla. The newest game in the Assassin's Creed series developed by Ubisoft Montreal Valhalla follows the Viking invasions of England. You take on the role of Ivor, a Viking raider, as you lead your fellow Vikings against the Anglo-Saxon kingdoms. Prior to Origins, I did not enjoy playing the Assassin's Creed titles. They always seemed to boil down to repeating tedious or mundane tasks with little or no character progression. Origins added a lot of RPG elements to the game, and then Odyssey came and perfected and expanded on them even further. I'm very excited for Valhalla because Viking history and Norse mythology are some of my favorite topics. 
If Ubisoft continues to expand on the RPG aspects of the series, I'll be more than happy to dump a ton of my time into playing this game. While I've never been too keen on the present day sections of the games, I won't let that deter me from playing what is likely going to be another great installment in the series. The game is currently available for pre-order on Uplay and is set to release holiday 2020. So there it is, the 10 games I'm most excited for for the second half of 2020. There's a lot of other games that are coming out and I'm probably going to end up backlogging a lot more than just these 10. These are just the 10 that I'm most excited about. I want to know what games you're excited for. Are there any other games coming out in the rest of the year that you're excited to see that aren't on my list? Maybe you're filling up your Steam library with games in the Steam summer sale. How are you holding up in quarantine? Do you have a new daily routine that you're trying to get used to or that you've already gotten used to and you're starting to worry about what's going to happen when you have to go back to work? Let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear from you. At the time of recording this video, the Steam Summer Sale is in full swing and I've been adding a ton of games to my wish list. I haven't put anything into my shopping cart and I haven't purchased anything yet, but I know that's coming and it's just going to add to that massive backlog that I have already building in my Steam library. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. It means a lot to me. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, consider leaving a like on the video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see my other content. I'm trying to drop two videos a week right now. If you don't want to miss any, turn the notification bell on so you get alerted whenever I put out a new one. Thanks again for watching, and as always, have a wonderful day.